Jackie Tantilla with you for this episode of Should Have Listened to My Mother, a podcast where we talk about your mother. And also, I've neglected to this point to include any of those other female role models that have been a cornerstone of your life, whether it be your grandmother, your aunties, your your cousins, all that kind of thing. And and we'll expand um, the guests to be more inclusive. And the, nothing I did intentional, obviously. But there are so many people that I talked to that said, oh my God, let's talk about my grandmother. And it's always yes, of course we can. So this episode of Should Have Listened to My Mother will speak with someone that I've worked with many, many, many years ago in radio. My first radio job at WPLT in Plattsburgh. Let's give Bill Frasino or Breeze a call. He's living in Vermont. And he's a super cool dude. <laughs> So let's see what he has to say. Again, thanks for listening to Should Have Listened to My Mother. Hi. Is this Bill Frasino or Breeze? It is. Hi. It's Jackie Tantillo from Should Have Listened to My Mother. How are you? It's been a really long time. It has been 30 plus years, maybe? (laughs) I just mentioned to my listeners that... You and I worked together in my first radio job yeah. at WPLT in Plattsburgh. So now you're living in Vermont. Yeah, I, I'm uh, uh, lucky and blessed enough to live in Vermont for six months in uh, beautiful Florida in Port St. Lucie on the southeast coast by the beach. Nice. Some mountains and some water. Sounds like a good... Yeah good way to live to me you got it now just before we go any further can we talk about how the breeze thing came around because i know you used to play a song <laughs> did you play the leonard's what did, for a blues show how did the breeze how did breeze come yeah. out and so a lot of people would recognize call me the breeze from leonard skinner however it was a cover it was written by jj kale Yes, singer-songwriter. Yeah, and done by JJ and, and Eric Clapton a few times, so uh, Call Me the Breeze. It, it was really what I used, but the nickname came around from when I was a freshman in Plattsburgh. So um, it comes from the Hanna-Barbera cartoon from the Gilla Gorilla days, Breezley and Sneasley. Wow. And then I <laughs> <laughs> so that is really the story on how it came around. Really, the whole college group only knows me that way. In work, it was Bill or Billy, and I'm officially William. And the only person that called me William was my father who called me Will. That's kind of cool, though, right? That's kind of nice for your dad to have his own yeah. unique way. Mom, mom was, it's always like, Billy! That was my grandmother. So I grew up with a grandmother and grandfather at home and my parents. And my brother was 14 years older than me, so I kind of grew up like an only child. First, before we go any further, because that's an interesting topic I want to talk to you about, your mom's name. Marianne Persino. Or she was Marianne Andriola and married Al Persino. And a great story is that six kids in the Bronx, six men married six women on the same block. So death did them all part. Isn't that crazy? Wow, that's pretty cool. (laughs) That's really cool. And both your parents were Italian based on the last name, right? Yes, yes. In fact, another quick story, and I know I only have a little bit of time, but my mother, um, I remember getting kidded at school because they said, you don't look Italian. And I'd come home and go, Mom, the kid said I don't look Italian. And she said, you tell him you're an FBI. I go, what's that? Full-blooded Italian. <laughs> <laughs> she, she really wanted to be Carol Burnett, my mother. <laughs> Wait, when my listeners see your mom's picture, they're just going to get a big chuckle out of that. Now, what was it about Carol Burnett that she loved? Um. You know, she was a comedian in the sense that 
interesting that how she dealt with people because she was she was an executive secretary for oh my god it was like 40 plus years at Letterly Labs in Pearl River, New York. It's now Pfizer. I think it changed its name a bunch of times, but ironically enough, I think um, the COVID vaccine part of the trials are in the town and in the place where my mother worked. So um, I think for her to deal with the people she did as a woman in the workplace, um, she used humor, just like my father did, a lot. Did she work while you were at home as a little child, or was this all pre-babies? No, 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 no. Um, So I kind of, like, you know, that's what a lot of my friends said, is that your parents were kind of almost like your grandparents because my grandmother was, always there. Um, my mother worked, but um, my, my mother and father both worked. And that's fine. I was, uh, I was, I remember my grandmother with her bodes because she was from Bari, Italy, and they called them the bodes. She'd always say, Marion, you're spoiling that child. <laughs> um, you know, I was kind of like, you know, because I was the only child. And your brother's name is? Tom. So I'm 60, he's 74. We're both young for our age. You would never think that I'm 60, I think. And you would never think that he's 74. Um, He's a retired teacher for many years in Connecticut. And he lives two hours north of me in Daytona with his wife, who is still working at 72, as a marketing director for United Healthcare. So uh, she loves work, and she's working know from apart and Tommy hangs out and plays cards can I ask have you guys ever compared notes on what your relationship or your perspectives of what your mom was like yeah I think yeah you know to give perspective too because my friends would always say my brother wasn't my brother was my uncle because he was you know so many years older than me and they're like that's not your brother but I said no he is and I think over the last five years we got closer about mom and him understanding my life because he lived in Connecticut most of his life with five children. And I lived in the Burlington, Vermont area. And quite frankly, we didn't, we we saw each other for holidays. Um, But when my mother moved toward him instead of me, um, we thought that was better for many reasons. We sort of got closer and there was some, travel that we had together that we got to talk about things um and over the last few years uh we got closer about things about mom but uh you know i i I look at pictures and he's a kid in the 40s and early 50s so very different yeah that's a big difference do you have any idea why there was the 14 year gap (laughs) just out of curiosity (laughs) I, uh, yes, that was another thing that I would kid my mother about. I'm like, you guys on some kind of drugs or what? Um, but no, it was uh, really, I, you know, I don't know everything, but my mother did say when I was, she got pregnant that she thought I was a tumor. I'm like, great. Um, so a I, tumor, you, know, you said. I came out later. Jackie, she was 38 in 1960 when she had me. Wow. So it was sort of, I was like a surprise baby. My father always wanted a girl. I was supposed to be Susan. Sorry, Dad. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I came out later, and uh, I, I asked. My father was, um, my memories of him throughout all the years, and because he was such an athlete young, and I was a would-be athlete most of my life, um, he walked with a, not a limp, but a, his neck on one side because he had spondylitis from a World War II accident. He fell off the uh, plane wing. He was a mechanic. And um, so he was never, um, he couldn't move the right way. And so, it was, you know, it was really interesting. And I said, did he possibly was on some kind of medications that maybe he couldn't? But uh, later in life, my brother did tell me some Sort of shocking stuff that I don't know if I really want to go into, but there was maybe some wandering off from my dad that it never happened, but I didn't know about it. And my brother told me like two years ago 
Oh. And so I don't think they're, I just don't think they were intimate, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's all different, but you know what? They stayed together, like you said, till death did them part. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, no, my father, unfortunately, my father died at a young age. He's, um, you know, we're all like 60 now. He was 66, had just retired and got pancreatic cancer and, and died within six months. And so my mother, you know, I was 26, so he never saw my children um, or my subsequent marriages. <laughs> I've had a few. Um but, uh, you know, mom was always there and pretty much lucid except for her last maybe two or three years where um, not Alzheimer's but more dementia mm -hmm. started to happen in her. But she made it since she was 95 years old. That's very impressive. So what did yeah. she do when your dad passed away? Did she go back to work? She never stopped working. You know, that was... Oh, um, my goodness. I mean, I can't think of when she retired, but... She worked, and she always told me to hang out with young people, and you will be young forever. And so her friends would come over, and they were, like, in their 30s. And then I was, like, in high school and then in college, and I would, like, hang out with them. So it was, like, really cool, just like I hang out with my brother's kids that I'm closer in age to than I am to him. So I think that this whole, like, try to stay young thing comes from mom who said, I'll never forget her saying that. Hang out with young people, you will be young. My mom used to love doing the same thing. I think it absolutely keeps you young. Younger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. And you also wrote to me, and most importantly, to smell the roses and not to be serious all the time. Yeah. Yeah, she, she had a great outlook on life. Did she tell jokes? Oh, yeah. My father was more the joke teller, but she was just, she, she was part of that uh, Purple Hat Society later in life, you know, where she wore the purple hat and they, they would always have things. They always had bridge parties at her house. So I remember, um, you know, not high consumption of alcohol, but like cocktail type and wine. And she would always have her wine and always be fun. And, um, you know, all our holiday parties and things we were we we did a lot of celebrating at our home growing up so you know and i was thinking about that the other day it's just you know it's tough now that people have all passed anybody that met her whether it was from later in life in my work life or um college or just anybody that i came across from my family and you know like friends uh it, it, they always ask about her because she definitely visited Vermont a bunch. And she suffered from syncope, which were fainting spells, and they never knew. I mean, they kept saying it wasn't her heart, but that is finally what gave out. So um, crazy enough, you know, I remember her being on the Lake Champlain transportation ferry for the fireworks, and she so the combination was she wouldn't eat enough, she'd have a couple glasses of wine, and dying she'd go. Um, oh, dear. And there was the captain of the boat, and I remember she, when she awoke, she awoke to the captain in her arms, and she's like, oh, my God, I've died and went to heaven, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she had the captain with his hat, and, you know, the whole, he had the full, like, regalia on. And, oh, a man uh, in a uniform. <laughs> yeah. A man yeah. in a uniform. I mean, she, she had, I mean, the story she would always say, you know, my father did pass at the early age, and people would ask, do you want to have a relationship? He goes, no, I want to find a nice gay man that could take care of me because they're so organized and clean and <laughs> together. That was what he used to say. Not, you know, and certainly I grew up in a place that um, there was never any, you know, negativity toward race, color, creed, religion, anything. My grandmother, that's another thing. How come your mom was that open and liberal? liberal. Was she liberal? I, um, I wouldn't, I'm, you know, from a political party, I'm not really sure, but just man, my parents were really, have taught me really great values and to accept everyone. Um, they worked with very pe different people from all races, colors, and creeds. My father worked at Pepsi, mom at Letterly Labs. 
and I think that maybe that was part of it, um, because it certainly didn't come from my grandmother, who was one of the biggest. But um, no, they were always like accept everyone who they are, and uh, whether they're whatever they are. That's pretty impressive. That's a great lesson you can turn yep. your kids on to, right? Um, yep. When you, if you weren't home, would your friends go over and just hang out with your mom there? We, the high school years, had a lot of parties at the house. I had like my friends sitting there talking to my mother, and my grandfather, and I'd be like, "Where's Andy? Oh, he's talking to your mom again." <laughs> um, so, and so he would remind me because we've been doing a Zoom call during COVID with about eighteen guys from high school, believe it or not. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was like people like my parents. I, I think my whole core of friends in high school, everybody liked everybody's parents. But they were, you know, there was no divorce. There was, it seemed like pretty separate. <laughs> it was pretty impressive. I grew up on Long Island, and we grew up in a town that was the same thing. We all, we went in and hung out with the parents when we were over at their house for a party. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Yeah. You know, I don't, and, and you know, I had, uh, I lived, we were Italian, Irish on one side of me, Jewish heritage on the other, um, whether they were atheists or whatever, or like my other neighbor, Lutheran, everybody was just, you know, it was the New York area. And I, I think it's a reason that, that, and I would, you know, mom used to come to Florida too when she was older in life and she'd go to St. Augustine. But what I like about it is, there's a lot of people here from New York. Last year I worked for the Mets, and um, I feel at home with New Yorkers. That's fantastic. I think it's, it makes an easier transition, too, if there's people of like mind. Yeah. So, plus, you know, you got a New York baseball team. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really like a childhood thing for, for me as my um Bob, that was more my father, but, you know, it took me to Mets games and Yankee games and all that. But, uh, you know, to actually have worked for the, I worked for the team right up to COVID. You are listening to Should Have Listened to My Mother. I'm Jackie Tantillo, and my guest is Breeze, or Bill Frasino, and he's talking about his mom, Marianne. Did you call her mom? Did, we used to call her mom by her first name by the time I got into high, junior high, high school. Um, yeah, it was mom. Uh, my father called her Mar called her Marion, right. so did my grandparents. Um, but she was always mom to me. Uh, I think my cousins were Aunt Marion to her. Uh huh. You mentioned that she uh, taught you to be a man of honor. When would when oh, would have yeah. something like that have come up, or why would have something come like that come up? Um, writing, like, I, one of the first things I think of is just writing thank you notes. So how it came up with me was later in life because I spent 35 years in your industry and in broadcast, but I was, uh, I sold radio advertising for 35 years, so I went into the whole marketing. That was really my major in school. But anyway, he would always teach me to write thank you notes, and that really resonated in sales real bike lead do the right thing type behavior that I learned from mom and that was do the right thing. Just if you do the right thing you'll you'll be fine. And she also said to just work hard. I know you can do this, Billy, if you put your mind to it. <laughs> that was enough. Like I said, without family for a lot of us during COVID, this is the memories are fantastic. Yeah, I think especially around the holidays, we all get sentimental. Yeah. And we think about how magical it was. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm <laughs> one of seven kids, and it was just nuts. And as we got older, we spent a lot of time in, up in Canada, in Montreal, in Quebec City as kids. And then, then we would start going up to Montreal for Christmas. So we have uh, lots of really fun traveling 
experience with my parents, which is really kind of fun. And and they lived overseas in, in Spain. My dad had to go for a job, and the, the last three of the siblings were born overseas. So two, two of us were born in Spain, and one was born in Gibraltar, even though both my parents were Italian. We were born in Spain. Yeah, so um, that traveling thing is really cool, too, to, to have those memories. Before she met your dad, do you know what kind of person your mom was or what she was into? Um, I don't know if she played tennis. She might have. Uh, but they always played bridge. I think she was a bit of a, you know, homemaker with Tommy. But she was, um, she went right, she went to Pace University. My father went to um, uh, City College. He always wanted to be an architect, but he became a graphic artist. And so she went right into the work world. Uh, So always, you know, as as in like a secretary, I I forgot the companies. I'd have to rack my brain before literally who it was, but there were some companies in New York as well. I think there might have been a bank or something. So she wasn't active in the the 60s heyday hippie stuff? Uh, No. (laughs) I, I would say, you know, more like suburban mom, Rockland <laughs> County. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm very involved in the involved in the church. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing about Mary Ann. And I know I can just see all of your buddies that you grew up with hanging out and just hearing stories about her. She sounds like she's pretty special. Yes, I look forward to sharing the podcast with my family. My guest, Bill Frasino, or otherwise known as Breeze, radio and TV advertising genius. Thank you for joining me on Should Have Listened to My Mother. I'm Jackie Tantillo.